Hey, it's Mike here with Blim Amplification. And today what we're going to do is take you through the repair of this Marshall JCM 900 uh, Mark III 50 watt high gain monster. Um, I don't really have a, a good video on this, so what I'm going to do is try to piece together what I can from pictures that I've taken and uh, schematics that I, that I went through on this. At the time, I wasn't thinking I was going to do uh, any repair videos. Uh, so what I'm going to do is show you guys how this repair went because I've not found anything online that kind of relates exactly to what was going on with this. Okay, what was going on with this Marshall was it was blowing fuses uh, just seconds after you took it off of standby. You could put the amp, uh, power it on, and it would sit there just fine. Um, as soon as you took it off of standby, uh, it would just start buzzing real loud and then pop. It would either pop the main fuse or it would pop the HT fuse. So the first thing I did with it was I put it on a light bulb limiter. And if when you had the amp running with the light bulb limiter, it would it would run, but of course the light bulb would, would glow pretty good. But you could actually play the amp uh, and you know it, 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 it would work. But as soon as you uh, plug it into the wall, it, it would go back to blowing fuses. Okay, so the first thing I seen whenever I uh, took the chassis out of the cabinet, flipped it over, of course you want to do a visual inspection of the board at first. And of course you see up here it is R5, a resistor, and that thing has been roasted somehow. Um, at first I thought, oh, I bet that resistor is bad. So I pulled the, actually pulled the resistor out of the board, uh, cleaned that up, put a new one in, but the resistor uh, value tested just fine. But uh, on the visual inspection of the board, that was the only thing that looked bad. Uh, checked all the, the solder joints. I ended up reflowing a bunch of the uh, solder joints, but none of them really looked bad. They, they were all uh, secure. So that was the only thing that was visually wrong on the board. Uh, Changed the resistor, plugged it back up, and uh, light bulb limiter just went to glowing. Okay, another thing I did on this amplifier was to pull the board. Uh, I was actually, that's why I labeled the pots. I was going to take them out, take them apart, and clean them, but I just sprayed them out and uh, I helped them a lot. Uh, the second pot there, the gain pot, was almost unusable. And uh, when the when it was on the light bulb limiter, you could turn the gain and the uh, light bulb would actually go dim. So I kind of thought I might be onto something there in the, in the preamp with that, but uh, come to find out it was not. But got the pots clean and they all work really good. All right, let's get into schematics. This is the closest schematic I could find on the preamp circuit on this particular amp. Okay, here's the preamp schematic. Um, 2502 Marshall JCM Mark III 50 watt master volume. This is not the reverb model. So um, the first thing I did was I just started going through here and checking values of stuff. Um, and what I found, there was a couple things that were off a little bit, but um, nothing real major wrong here. Uh, the voltages and stuff, even with it being on the light bulb limiter uh, running, um, I could tell that the voltages were, were, uh, were right here in the preamp. And this was the closest schematic I could find on the output section. Okay, so we're into the, like the uh, transformers and the output section. Um, I went in and checked the output transformer, and of course it'll power on and it would run and everything, uh, just uh, blowing fuses. 
uh, did a check on the output transformer. Uh, D Lab does a good video on how to how to test these uh, with a multimeter, and uh, just kind of started walking through this thing, thinking what it could be, and testing voltages here, and um, what I noticed was that I did not have any negative voltage here on the output tubes. So after looking through this thing, for, I, I spent a lot of hours on this because this was uh, really the first one that I had dug into. I haven't, I haven't been doing this uh, very long when I did this actually. In like August and got this in December, uh, I built an amp and put an amp together uh, using a couple radios and stuff. Of course, Uncle Doug, D-Lab, and the guitologist uh, really helped me out on, on learning this stuff. But um, no negative voltage. So I kind of figured I, tr I traced it down here into the bias circuit. Okay, the bias circuit. Uh, I went in here and located all of these, uh, and I went through and uh, actually pulled the potentiometer out and really gave it a good a good test and, and clean. And you know, you put it on the multimeter and and it, and it works. Um, all the resistors I changed out. I come up here and and uh, tried different resistors here. Everything looked good. Uh, this cap seemed to be fine. The only thing that I didn't have, and you got to know that I was really green. Still, I'm very green at all this, but um, this 47N Class X, I, I just didn't want to go to. I mean, I was at the point I wanted to fix this thing pretty bad, and uh, I was just going to start ordering parts and put them in, but I really wanted to kind of find out what was wrong with it without just swapping all the parts in and then, hey, it, it works, you know. So I changed these resistors down here and put the amp back together. And uh, something did change when I did that because I could actually take the amplifier and take it off of the light bulb limiter and run it for probably 20 seconds enough to see that the tubes were red plating. So, I mean, I, I knew with no negative voltage at, that something was going on in here, um, but I had changed the resistors and that did not help the problem. Here's where the story gets a little bit interesting, at least it did for me in working on this miraculous Marshall repair. Um, this thing sat out in my workshop uh, for a while. I would pick it up and look at it, watch more videos, pick it up, look at it, look at the schematic, watch more videos, go out, try something for 10 seconds. Didn't work, uh, not getting anywhere with it. So um, I was working on a couple other projects and uh, of course, when you're getting into this stuff and you're uh, getting a little bit of equipment, you don't really want to spend a lot. But uh, I did splurge on one piece of equipment and got pretty much the best signal generator that uh, is made on the planet. And uh, anyway, my first signal generator didn't last very long. Of course, they... They don't last long when you touch them to about 150 volts. They seem to not like that. But um, anyway, that signal generator, uh, you can use a 9-volt battery. Or, and I didn't have a 9-volt DC uh, plug-in. I had like an 18-volt one. So I uh, had an old wall wart, and I was uh, this Marshall was just sitting in the corner at this time. And I was trying to get the uh, 
my other signal generator that I had bought um, going on nine volts. So uh, got my trusty high quality power strip in, plugged it into the wall, plugged the wall ward in, messing with it, and had just zero, zero volts, you know. And uh, got aggravated. Come to find out the power strip uh, was is intermittent. And uh, the uh, wall wart, I thought, it's bad. I, I burned it up somehow. I was frustrated. And I actually took the wall wart and... Uh, took it apart gently with a hammer and uh, to my surprise there was one of those X2 safety capacitors in there. I was uh, I was like man there's one of those capacitors um, that's in that Marshall that I was gonna have to order and I didn't want to order a just a one dollar part and pay eight, bu eight bucks shipping for it. So um, anyway I uh, took that capacitor and uh, Got the Marshall out, uh, unsoldered the, the old one, put that one in, put it on the bench, and instantly had uh, negative voltage on pin 5, and um, fired the amp up, and uh, put the tubes in on the light bulb limiter, and everything, everything was working. I was just blown away by it. Um, thankful for it. Of course, uh, I'm a Christian, and I give uh, God all the praise and glory for the ability to fix stuff like this and I mean if a guy has a belief and he's not willing to talk about it it's not much of a belief to begin with now is it well I apologize that I didn't uh, document this better as I was doing this um, try to do better in the future with it I hope this video helps somebody I hope it uh, helps them get an amp back uh, to rocking and uh, I think what we'll do, uh, I got a couple other amps that I have some pictures of that I've kind of worked on and, and uh, maybe go through the uh, just how I, I got into working on this stuff. So I hope you've enjoyed the video and we'll see you next time.